my guest today is Professor Gregory Rabassa, Distinguished Professor of Spanish and Portuguese at Queens College of the City University of New York, and well known as the Translator's Translator. You always uh, talk in your lectures and in your writings about uh, the concept of the other and putting yourself in the other's shoes uh, or the other's skin. Uh, in a way, it's, it's almost like acting or role playing. Can you just reflect briefly on I, that? I uh, agree. It is, I think the translator is very much the actor because we're taking on the role of the writer. And uh, the idea is that uh, we are trying to write the book that this other person would have written had he or she written it in English. We're not, we really shouldn't try to say, well, I'm taking these words from Spanish or Portuguese and uh, putting in the proper English substitutes. No, that's when you get a bad translation. What you do is you say, here I am. I am Garcia Marquez. I am writing this novel, but I'm writing it in English. Now, how shall I say it? And keeping the writer, this very good if you know the writer and uh, have some inkling as to how he or she thinks. But uh, even so, from the book, you could probably get an idea about the writer. And as an actor, put yourself into his role. There is one problem, however. We do compare it to acting. I think that's a perfect uh, uh, idea. But we have Hamlet. And then we have John Gielgud. Then we have Laurence Olivier reading the same lines that Shakespeare wrote, and yet we have two different Hamlets. So I think uh, that's why translation may be impossible, <laughs> that the only true Hamlet you can get is to manufacture uh, this Hamlet out of Shakespeare's mind and have him on the stage, which you can't do. So that we, we get, you, you get two very good translations of the same book. What do you think is the future of, of translation in the United States? Um, there are different points of view about this. You know, some are very pessimistic that um, the United States is, is such an inward-looking country, uh, culturally isolated from the rest of the world, even though we're a, a very diverse society. Um, by and large, Americans don't look outward for cultural experiences. And so what do you think is the future of translation as it stands now? Yeah, on this, I, I generally tend to be a pessimist on most things. But in this, I'm rather optimistic in that I don't see it getting any worse. The, uh, the condition of translation in the United States has always been pretty bad. But it has been getting better. I don't think it's going to be ideal but I don't see it going down. I would say that, by and large, the best books, at least in where I'm thinking of my own field in Latin America, Spain, and Portugal, that the best books in those countries have been translated. There are also a lot, a lot of them hidden around, but uh, I don't see that. Uh, that is, the books that have come out, the ones I've been associated with, like Garcia Marquez, um, is being translated and will be translated as long as he's, he's writing. Cortasa had several books translated. There are other authors that uh, deserve translation, but I don't know that there are any more Garcia Marquez's or uh, uh, Cortasa's hiding out there who have not been recognized enough mm -hmm. to get a, a publisher. There's a lot of good books that should be translated. But I, I'm rather optimistic in the sense that uh, the status quo, which is better than it was, uh, say, 50 years ago, uh, will be maintained. Well, it that's, that's could be good. better. We could have more variety and more yeah. books. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's encouraging. You've received a lot of honors in your career, and most recently the National Medal of the Arts uh, from the White House, um, Lifetime Achievements Awards that um, are 
coming to you, I think, in March with the Brazilian Studies Association, and uh, you won a, an important pen prize for your memoirs, If This Be Treason. Um, what do you, what is your uh, reaction to all of these honors, and, and what anecdotes, if any, do you have to share with us about that? One thing that with the prize, uh, the Medal of uh, the Arts, was I was uh, pleased and surprised to see that at the same time they gave the medal in the humanities. Mm -hmm. And then when we all came together afterwards, there was my old friend Bob Fagels, the mm. classical translator, who was getting the, the medal in the humanities. And he's a, he's a translator too. He's done, oh, okay. he's done Homer and Virgil and lots of plays. So in good. fact, I awarded him the uh, Lennon, I forget what the, which, for the, the, the Academy of American Poets. I was the judge. Oh, all right. And I picked him for his translation of the Iliad. Uh-huh. And that, so it was nice to see the two translators there together getting the prize. Well, it certainly is, is gratifying to see that there are, are rewards for good translation. Um, organiz agencies like the National Endowment for the Arts, for example, yeah are that they're uh, offering yearly awards for translation or grants for new translation is, is very encouraging. And I think that's a very positive thing for the future of translation studies in the U.S. since well, the, the uh, new incentives chairman, are important. Dana Joy, the chairman who is a poet, also has an interest in international literature because his mother was Mexican and his father was Sicilian. So he knows other cultures. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Well, thank you for these precious moments. Uh, we've known each other for many years, and um, I really appreciate this opportunity to talk with you. Very great pleasure for me to be here with you.